Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries, the story of a flower farmer who just weeks ago started seeds in great anticipation of an amazing fifth season here at Flower Hill Farm. Little did she know she was just weeks away from an unthinkable infestation right here in the grow room. More on that later, but first, the footage of an unsuspecting farmer just trying to start her season right. Welcome to Seed Starting Pandemonium. Hi, flower friends. It's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And today I'm starting all of my cool flowers that will be planted here at the farm. I set aside this entire day just to plant these seeds. I have thousands of seeds and more than a dozen of varieties that I'll be starting today. This is a pile of most of my seeds, as you can see here. We do have some more poppies to start today, but for the most part, we are going heavy on the dill. We've got sweet peas, snapdragons, more snap, there's thousands of snapdragons in here. We've got rudebeckia. We have status. Bachelor Buttons and Monarda. We have Phlox, those are the annual Phlox. We have Scabiosa, multiple varieties of this. We have a straw flower. We have, what is it? Yoro, and there are multiple other things in here as well. Oh, I already had that one, it must have fallen down. Dianthus, and then there are other loose things in here. I've got some perennials that I'm starting in here today. I have lamb's ear in here, and I also found some more ranunculus corms that I'm gonna go ahead and start that I forgot that I had. And then I have other things like feverfew. These are the other dianthus. I've got more feverfew, and I also have nigella. A lot of times these things come with the names that you don't automatically recognize, so I also label it like chrysanthemum parthenium campania. That's just fever view. I also have agristema and what's the other one that I was gonna start? Um, oh, Orlea. If you guys aren't familiar, cool flowers, you can plant the seedlings in your landscape, in your farm, six weeks before your last frost date. So I start the seeds six weeks before that. So I'll have little baby seedlings in my basement for six weeks and six weeks from now, I'll be planting them out in the landscape. So for me, that means starting my seeds now, I'll be able to plant them outside. They'll be ready to go April 10th, April 11th, which it will be five to six weeks before my last frost date. So they should be okay outside. They are very hardy and I've had things outside when it gets down to the 20s and everything has been okay. This is my soil blocking station. Okay, so I'm going to continue making my soil blocks. My sister is on her way here. My sister does not like to be on camera, so you're probably not gonna see her, but my mother-in-law is coming and she doesn't mind. Most people, I would say 99 out of 100 people don't mind being on camera for my YouTube channel. My sister is adamantly against it, so you'll see her, maybe her hand. Yep, her beautiful, lovely hand. starting with rocket red snapdragons this is a leftover from last year packet and I don't I guess succession plant my snapdragons because I grow multiple different varieties and each one has a slightly different bloom time so I find it even if by starting them at the same time I have blooms for a long time during the season last year I had some amazing snapdragons I have a few of my favorites include red Delilah Maryland orange and what is the other one? It's another orange oh, Monaco orange. Oh, those were fantastic. Also the Maryland red one was really nice too. Just nice thick pencil sized stems, which are absolutely perfect. Okay. I finished the tray of rocket red snapdragons. It's labelled with masking tape and a garden marker. These are waterproof and they're sun resistant, all those things. They don't fade, they don't rub off, they don't do anything. They're amazing and I won't use anything else. I spent the first couple seasons using a Sharpie or a pen or a pencil. By the end of the season, I couldn't tell what was what. So I love these garden markers, I will use those all the time. Now what I do here is I spray. This is probably one of a bazillion sprayers that I have. I missed the top. And I used to just put my plastic wrap right over top of the soil blocks, but I found out a couple of years ago that sometimes the little baby seedlings will attach to the plastic instead of the soil block. So when I lifted it up, I had a ton of seedlings on the top of my plastic wrap. So then I just bought some of these 
pizza table top things. They literally just set right perfectly over the top of the soil blocks. I put one in each corner and one in the middle and then I put the plastic wrap over top of that and that gives a little bit of breathing room in between the plastic wrap and the soil blocks. That way the seedlings when they emerge and germinate they're not sticking to the top of the plastic. It's been a huge help. Really, really good. My in-laws are here. It's coffee time. What? I had an outfit change. Oh my gosh. Yes. I actually had to go to a baby shower. So I snuck away for an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. And I'm back and held down the fort. My sister took off and now we're just finishing up. I'm doing flocks and she's doing some snapdragons. I give her the more difficult seeds. Yeah, I have the glasses. Makes it easier. <laughs> uh huh. Yes. It was totally accident. I didn't do it on purpose. This is seed I have left over from my Florette Leopoldi flocks. I'll throw a photo up on the screen for you. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh. And here we are, back in the basement, surrounded by seedlings whose fate is yet known. I will tell you, however, the Lysianthus looks amazing because this is the good news. There's good news and then there's bad news. First of all, I do have two trays of pansies here that I um, started for the nursery. I'm not bringing them there. Nothing from my basement is going to the nursery because we have aphids and we don't just have any aphid we have flying aphids and that means they're on every tray normally you see aphids and they're crawling aphids these aphids well they do more than crawl they grow wings and then they fly from tray to tray to tray to tray to tray to tray to tray so clearly this was brought in i am only guessing and assuming there were eggs in my con in my soil and uh, that's where they hatched originally and it's truly because of the limited amount of time that I have been monitoring the seedlings. I My schedule is basically I wake up in the morning, I walk, water the seeds after I take care of my kids and my dogs, and then I make my way down here and I spend 10 to 15 minutes down here watering, fertilizing, inspecting, things like that. However, it's not as much time as I normally dedicate to my seedlings when I before I had the nursery. So I didn't notice. I did not notice the absolute horror that was approaching and that why I told you guys before first I saw it on my ranunculus because it was uh, I looked closer and I'm like something why are these droopy they're not in need of water and they're not overcrowded they're not root bound and uh, I took a closer look and I saw thousands of aphids and at first I wasn't that concerned because okay a tray or two of ranunculus I'm gonna isolate these I'm gonna get rid of them and then I noticed some bugs on my leaves and I said, these don't look like fungus gnats. I thought they were fungus gnats. Fungus gnats I can deal with. Flying aphids, however, I noticed that little tiny eggs were next to the, the wherever these bugs were on the back of the leaves, there were little tiny eggs. And I was like, fungus gnats don't do that. This is something else. And I determined that they are indeed flying aphids. I sprayed everything down here with bonide product. And I also have been using the yellow sticky traps and that's disgusting. The amount of flying aphids down here, it's unreasonable, unreasonable. I will tell you, however, the Lysianthus remains untouched. The bugs do not seem to be attracted to them. So there's no aphids. They're not even landing on them. They're not laying eggs on the Lizzie's, so that's good. They're also not landing on the feverfew. Feverfew has a scent that maybe they're deterred from that, so that's good. But they're on everything else. Everything else. Well, you know what? The lamb's ear. I've noticed that they're, they're not on the lamb's ear. I don't know why. It doesn't have a strong odor. Um, but this is the lamb's ear that we started 
on 226 and there are no eggs, no bugs, no evidence of any aphids for some reason on this. Now I need to water down here. So you'll notice that things look a little dry, but here are the snapdragons that my sister and my mother-in-law started. We're, they're going uh, really well. I mean, they still all look healthy. Nothing looks like, ah, oh, I have aphids, but they're still there. Yep, I can see eggs on the back of these leaves right here. So what I've been doing now is in addition to spraying weekly with the Bonide product, I have been inspecting the backs of the leaves. I don't even know if you can see that. Really, it's hard to see. But there are little tiny eggs and I'm just squishing and squishing. So every morning now I'm down here for at least 20 minutes, just squishing, 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 trying to reduce the population. I mean, I keep thinking to myself, do I just toss all this stuff out? Do I just throw everything out, bag it, tag it, and get rid of it and start fresh? And I just, I don't think that that's necessary. I really don't. I'm going to try my best to get rid of everything. But what I am hesitating to do is start any more seeds down here. So I might have to temporarily move my seed germination station from the basement. I might start my hot like my warm crops the celosia the amaranth the zinnias the other crops for the farm my later flowers i might start those at the nursery and bring them here because i don't want to have to deal with these bugs all over the new seedlings that i'm going to be starting i think that's i'm pretty sure that's the plan i'm going to go with that i'm not going to be starting any more seeds down here and then i'm going to have to get like fumigate this space i i honestly <sighs> It's been extremely, what's the word? It's been extremely disheartening. I've been, I, lo I lost a lot of sleep over this. You know, I'm losing sleep all that left and right here. Things about the nursery stress me out, but this, this was tough. I've never had an issue like this down here. I've heard other people having aphid issues. I've heard of other people having like a really bad fungus issues or thrips or bugs can just devastate everything um, but this is awful it's awful but i'm gonna get through it um the plants will survive they're not really even suffering they're just it's just so gross and they're small and they're being chewed on by these things and it's so bad but they're still alive there's just so much to squish i'm just squish 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 they're on the back of everything i still wonder if i should just toss everything out but I don't think so because look, like they're healthy. All right. What I am going to do is I'm not going to bring in ladybugs in my basement. I'm not going to do that, but I am going to bring ladybugs in the hoop house and release them in there because the ranunculus, I planted ranunculus with aphids, with aphids. So I have to just take care of that in there and releasing ladybugs in there I think is going to be a good plan. I can't do it right now because it's too cold to have them shipped to me right now. It's not warm enough. We still have some temperatures that are dipping down but as soon as temperatures actually I'm going to look at the seven day forecast and if everything is about 40 degrees and above I'm going to go ahead and order them in and release them uh, definitely, but I want to make sure that they're going to be able to handle the temperatures. Hoop house is warming up beautifully during the day. Uh, it really is, and it's really not getting that cold at night. It's staying above 30 degrees right now. So the ladybugs are my solution for in there. This sticky trap, oh, it's so sticky, has only been sitting here for two days right above this, this snapdragon, and it's, it's just completely covered. These are not fungus gnats. These are flying thrips. I've never had to deal, I mean, not thrips, sorry, aphids. <sighs> it is so disgusting. I hate them. There are no fungus gnats down here. No fungus gnats in my basement this year. Just aphids. I can see them just flying around. They're just like, hey, I live here too. They like to hang out in the lights. So I, I tap on the lights, they fall down. <laughs> It's an aphid lollipop. So let's look at the lysianthus. Can you, does this have water in it? No. Okay, this is the 11 week update for lysianthus, guys. These are, I think it's, who are you? You are the white Dublini. This is the Dublini, it's starting to stretch up. No aphids. 
aphids, they're so pretty. For some reason, the aphids are just not attracted to the lysianthus, so these guys are okay. Look, look at that root system, that's amazing. And they're starting to grow up now too. But you'll notice that there are some that are smaller. These ones are about the size of a quarter. These ones are massive. So everything grows differently, even when given the exact same living experience. So uh, every single year, the ones along the edge are smaller. That's because the water just doesn't get to them as much as it does to the middle. I've been overhead watering these. I have that hose set up and that's how I've been watering them. Here's another tray of, oh, this one does have water in it. <laughs> Here's another tray of Roseanne Brown um, Lysianthus. These ones look really good. Look, that one's like teeny tiny. There is a little bit of algae growth on the top. It's kind of normal to have algae growth. If you have a lot of algae growth, make sure you have fans on because fans are going to help dry out your plants and make sure they're not too wet. But still, regardless of that, these guys, look at that. Oh, you're so good. And I could bump these up again if I want to. I just don't have the time this year to bump them up again. These are 128 trays. They seem to be very happy here. So I'm just going to keep them in the 128 trays. I have several other trays of Lysianthus. They all look like this. Some of them are huge. I mean, that's like the size of a baseball. And then some of them are the size of a quarter. They're all going to be okay. And when you get them in, when you order the plugs in, and I'll show you guys an unboxing video, I think I'm getting in some next week. I think I'm getting in some uh, trays from Farmer Bailey, but they're all about a quarter to a half dollar when you order them in. Here's a look at the fever few that my grandfather started. Uh, when did he start this? Where's my, oh, okay. So uh, February 2nd, look at the bottom. This is uh, really nice. This is part of the hoop house plans. These need to be planted this week. I do have some helpers coming to um, help me with that. There's a, they're a little dry, but it does have a very strong odor and that might be what's preventing the aphids from um, landing in this zone. Maybe if I put feverfew in every, like break it apart and put one in every tray, maybe they'll leave my stuff alone. I swear, this is just so disheartening, but it's okay. It's gonna be okay. A really horrible germination on my flock, so I'm probably gonna start more of those today. My sister and I are gonna be at the nursery all day starting seeds, more seeds, more vegetables, more flowers for the nursery. But I think I'm going to start some for here too. I'm going to bring all of my seeds there today, kind of do an inventory. I've started a lot of tomatoes and peppers there, things like that, um, eggplant. Um, but we're coming up on about six weeks away from planting season locally. I'd like to get the majority of stuff started over the next week. Here we have some snapdragon that were also started for early production. As you can tell, I'm down here because I'm down here to water. So you can see it's pretty dried out. But these were started... on January 30th, and these are obviously Chantilly Velvet Snaps, and these are for the hoop house. Here are some stock babies that are also for the hoop house. These were also started that day. All of this stuff is basically hoop house stuff is ready to go out. This is the other side of that. We have some more stock. I have some more uh, snapdragons here and here. And if I wanted to, I could pinch these snapdragons, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to plant them out. I have a few more trays of stock. Here they are that need to go out. These are stuff that I potted up with my grandfather. Up here, I have things that like darkness. For instance, this is flocks, uh, annual flocks. Look at that. Nothing. Nothing. Usually, I have amazing germination on flocks, and this year it's just. It's pretty poor. This tray is the best so far. I might have to just start some more. I mean, it's been, uh, as you can see, it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, that's really, really awful germination. But this isn't the only thing I'm having poor germination on. This is my tray of scabiosa. Usually I have pretty decent germination. I don't know if the seeds are too old or what. Obviously this is dry. I came up down here to water. Uh, it's not good. This is awful. I'm going to have to start more of these. Look at this germination. Doesn't that make you just disgusting? This is status. And on this side, I have blue status. And on this side, I have pastel blue status. And the pastel blue status is just hideous. Over here, though, we have, I think this is straw flower. My sister started. Yep, they're straw flowers. Uh, really, really nice germination on the straw flower. 
We've got more status. I just have a lot of different colors of status. This one is purple status, which is, that's a new one for me. And this one is white status. White status is one of my favorites to use. White goes with everything. The apricot goes with everything. All right, more snapdragons. I think that's dianthus. Yes, that's dianthus right there, all different kinds. And this is, I think, also dianthus. It looks like it. Let me check. Yes, this is a neon cherry dianthus. This I did two different ways. This, everyone keeps saying, have you seen the swift blocker? Yes, I've seen the swift blocker. So these are swift blockers and those are soil blocks. So doing a little bit of both. I've only used the swift block blocker twice. One here and then a tray of feverfew that I already have in the garage. And the swift blocker is just a new product. It's a little bit bigger. It's larger than your average soil block um, and you can make more of them at once. I'm still learning how to use it. There's a bit of a learning curve. I'm still learning how to use it. So the soil blocks is what I'm using the majority of. More snapdragons because I do thousands of snapdragons, but look at the poor, poor germination on Rubecchia. This is the Triloba, which is okay because I only need a few of those. Um, and this is more snaps. This is another tray of Rubecchia. We've got uh, Gloriosa Double Daisy, more Snapdragons, more Rubecchia. You guys know I do a lot of Rubecchia every year. And this is Goldilocks. I love Goldilocks. I love Gloriosa. I love all the Rubecchias. Let's be honest. More Snapdragons back there. Who's over here? Oh, this is a status. Oh, this is a new status to me. It's called Forever Happy, which is, I think it's a pink status. It could be yellow. Don't, don't quote me. That's looking pretty good. It's a little bit thirsty, so I need to get um, some water down here. Down here, we have more Dianthus. Dianthus, it just performed really well for me in bouquets, and it was the perfect filler, the perfect pop of color. So I have some of that. Um, and then I have another tray of straw flowers. Obviously, one of them has poor germination. The rest are decent. And then I started some bachelor buttons. I don't usually start some batch. I This is best direct seeded, uh, but I started some for fun. Um, Here's an example. I don't know why we didn't use a garden marker on this, but here's an example why you don't use anything but a garden marker because uh, fortunately I know that I only started one kind of Dublini, but this is a Dublini. Some of the status looks kind of unaffected. There are some aphids on them, but it's really not that bad. I think ladybugs are the way to go once I get them outside. The ladybugs, I've seen them devour dozens of aphids in minutes they really just go hum, hum, hum. kind of reminds me of pac-man ladybugs hum, hum, hum. they just eat the entire population i've released ladybugs in the past and they really do work a lot of people say that the ladybugs disappear but i know that they've stuck around at least some of them because i find ladybug larvae on my stuff outside all the time so i know the ladybugs are sticking around and i will just add to the population this year Really not much else I can do. Um, the Bonide product that I've been using is called Eight. It is uh, something that I can apply weekly and it does kill the bugs on contact, but also it stays in the plant itself. And if the bugs chew on any of the leaves or take a bite, like aphids are suckers, right? They attach to the plant stem and they suck the life out of the plant. They will die subsequently because the product, the Bonite product, is still in the plant for a few weeks. Normally, I'm a Captain Jack's dead bug brew kind of girl, but this is a serious problem. I have to take serious measures. And that's the latest from my basement. It's kind of been a very crazy. Oh, that Rubecchia looks really good. Sorry, squirrel. See, this this Rubecchia looks decent. I've got a sticky. I've been only peeling off the back side of the stickies and putting them right on top of the plants. That way. They crawl all over without getting, and it's working. There's probably 15 or 20. I put these on last night. All right, unsolved mystery, but I think I solved it. Pretty sure it came from my potting soil. It happens. You can't, you know, you know, the only thing that I can do is heat my soil up. I could heat it up and uh, put it in the oven, stuff like that. You know, maybe that's what I need to do next year. I've never done that before because I use such large quantities when I'm starting seeds. I've never done it. But clearly, I need to do something next year because this has been such a suck on my time. Like these aphids, they suck the life out of the plants. They've been suck on my time. I've been coming down here and squeezing and squishing and squishing and squeezing. 
<gasps> it's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. All right, well, I have to go continue to squish. I have to water these plants. And then I also have to head to the nursery and get some stuff done. I do have a fan that circulates down here 24 hours a day. That I turned off right now because it's really loud and I didn't want it to be too loud in the audio for the video. But other than that, guys, everything looks good. Unfortunately, it's just covered in aphids. So I'll bring you guys some updates as to how these plants fare, how the population dwindles, hopefully, with squishing and squashing and spraying. I have to kind of come at it from all angles, but so far, so good. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. Here. Hey, don't you dare. Don't you hit, don't you hit my arm. You're knocking the seeds off, Fern. All right. Get down. Get down. <laughs> you knocked my whole seat down. I love you. You're silly. Thank you. Woo -hoo, ah! And we're back in the basement, and this is my basement. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Amen.